In this video, I want to cover the best performing open-ended investment company over the last five years. It's really interesting. I think you'll enjoy this video. So we've already looked at the best global fund and I'll put a link to the video in the description so you can look at that. We've also covered the best fund for dividends and again I'll put a link to that one in the description. And then finally I've also covered global trackers, how to select them and which one I think is the best. So we're now looking at the legal and general global 100 index which is this orange line here and as you can see it beats global trackers over a five year period. So the remit of the fund is to invest in the 100 largest companies that truly have a global presence in terms of where they sell their product and where they allocate their assets. And it gets me wondering how many great companies are there in the world. So if you ask Terry Smith, he'd probably say, well, there's about 30 that are at a price worth buying. And if you go with the logic of a global tracker, you end up with anywhere between 1,500 to 4,000 companies. So my response is, well, are some active funds actually overly concentrated and are passive funds just holding too many duds? And maybe if there was a balance between these two, we could do really well. So when analysing the L&G Global 100, one of the things I know is the fees are pretty low. You can get it from about 0.09%, which is interesting. We've got the top 10 holdings here. Uh, one that isn't in the US, Nestle, so that's interesting. It is quite dominated by software and technology hardware with overweightings to things like Apple and Microsoft because there's not many other holdings to balance out these mega cap companies and in terms of country exposure we've got US at just over 70% and interestingly UK coming in at number two at 7%. I went to the iShares website if you go there you can get the companies a listing for all their ETFs they do a US ETF version of this index and it said that these are the UK companies within the global 100 index that's maintained by S&P. So some quite interesting ones like AstraZeneca, Unilever, Diageo, um, my least favourite company Vodafone unfortunately is still there and then some rather stodgy cyclical companies which is a bit of a shame. So some companies are excluded either because they're not truly global, for example, Berkshire Hathaway or United Health, which just operates in the US. And some either have a lot of intangible assets that aren't really located anywhere, so possibly Meta, um, and then some that maybe just don't report the global allocation of their assets. Um, so things like Tesla not being there is a little bit strange and Visa and MasterCard as well is certainly a bit of an anomaly and a bit of a shame because those last two are actually pretty good companies. So the advantages of focusing on mega cap companies are that they're generally diversified across a wide range of geographies so if China has a recession they can just sell more strongly into like neighbouring companies, countries like maybe Vietnam. They're also diversified across product groups. So again, if one product group takes a bit of a bashing, then they can maybe start to refocus the business a bit. So they're quite resilient to changing economic conditions. They also have access to low cost capital. When they borrow, they're borrowing at some of the lowest rates available. They generally have superior management. They pay management more in one year than you and I will earn in a lifetime. And these people have to really earn their salaries. And they've also got a large war chest to fund research and development and just growth in general. And Amazon is a great example of this. So these companies can invent new products, have new ideas that you or I have never thought of and they can really transform themselves 
over the next few years to grow. So the LNG Global 100 also avoids some sectors and generally these are poor return on capital employed areas that just don't translate well globally and examples might be house builders or pub chains or construction companies so possibly cyclical kind of low margin things things that the brand just doesn't really mean anything and then also a great thing about the LNG Global 100 is that it's definitely survival of the fittest losers are culled quickly if you drop from 90th in the world to 101 you're out whereas in a global tracker you're still in there so there's some built-in momentum into this fund there's no guarantee that it will always outperform so please do your own research read the fact sheet and try and understand whether it fits well into your portfolio it's one of the few funds to overweight Microsoft and Apple and so it's the success of these companies that is partly powering the LNG Global 100. Here are some portfolio characteristics and again I got this from the iShares website. I think the number of holdings at 102 is because of the duplication within Alphabet because there's two classes of shares. Uh, we've got a yield of uh, around about 1.5 percent. The volatility is saying it's about 18 percent so that's actually pretty good price to book ratio that's quite high but it's probably reflecting the strong brands that are involved beta close to one well yeah pretty much is the market that's okay p e ratio less than 20 so well it's not sky high uh, it's maybe quite a lot for mega caps uh, it's always interesting to keep a note of the p e ratio of your funds over time because that's a good indication of whether they're overvalued or not because if the growth in the fund has just come from PE ratio growing rather than underlying earnings growing then you know it's maybe time to reevaluate whether you should top slice that fund out of your portfolio. So here I've gone to the Hargreaves Lansdowne website and what I've done is looked at the cumulative performance of funds that are trackers and then yeah here's LNG at number one with Islamic that excludes things like banks actually coming in quite a close second but it's got higher fees and then S&P 500 is in at number three. I wonder if you can guess what is the worst performing open-ended fund well there's no surprises here of course it's Vanguard and it's a Vanguard bond fund so please don't be a Vanguard Muppet. The LNG Global 100 is a great fund and its ongoing charges fee is lower than most global trackers. But if you want a fund that can really supercharge your portfolio, I highly recommend you check out this video which explains the best global fund that I've ever found in over a year and a half of looking.